first video series that we're going to do, video lesson on metal finishing. Um, this video we're going to cover uh, the tools and the materials necessary uh, in order to prep out your firearm to uh, put a metal finish on it, whatever finish you decide. The prep is pretty much the same. Okay, so this particular firearm right here, this rifle has a, uh, a rust blue finish on it. Um, there's other videos that I'm going to do where we're going to talk about spray finishing. We're going to talk about hot caustic finishing. Um, all the things that are necessary in order to finish your firearm. Okay, so as you guys go along and you progress as custom firearm builders, you're going to start to grasp that the finish that you apply towards your firearm is just as important as how well you machine the barrel for your firearm, how well you do the stock and inletting for your barrel, for your firearm. Um, I think metal finishing sometimes gets ignored a little bit. Um, lots of times, you know, you'll see builders or, or whatnot that kind of, uh, yeah, I'm all finished with this gun. I'm going to send it off to somebody and have it be finished. Uh, wait four or five weeks for it to come back and then, you know, basically it's, it's, it's ready to be sold at that point. Um, how I try and teach the class is from a perspective of teaching you guys methods where you're not going to have to send your firearm out in order to be finished. You're not going to have to send it to some, somebody to hot caustic blue it. So you're not going to have to send it out to someone to Cerakote it or Duracote it. Okay, you're going to be able to do everything to this firearm to get it ready for your customer in-house within your own shop. Okay, and that's going to save you a lot of money and more importantly, it's going to save you a lot of time. Okay, so my philosophy and I've classes I've taught in the past is that when you get your firearm to the point of it being metal finished, at that point, you're within about a week of being paid. Okay. Um, and if you have to send your firearm out to someone to either Cerakote it or Duracote it or hot caustic blue it or rust blue it or something, at that point you lose control of the process of building a firearm. Okay, most of the people you send it out to, it's going to be at least minimum four weeks and that's if they're not very busy. Most often it's six to eight weeks before you get that rifle back or that handgun back. So you have to think about that as a firearm builder, okay? If I send this out and it's four to six weeks before I get it back and I'm charging my customer you know, 2,500 bucks, $3,000, whatever, for this custom build, I am sitting on that money. I'm waiting for someone else to get done in order for me to get paid for this firearm. And when you're starting out as a small shop, which almost all of you will, um, that's a lot of money to sit on, okay? That's a lot of money to wait on. So the methods that I'm going to go over in this class, the methods that I'm going to teach you, allow you to do a quality, high-end finish of a firearm and do everything within the confines of your shop. You will not have to send it out. Use is all stuff that you can do. And it's all part of the skills necessary to truly be a custom firearms builder, okay? So this particular finish that's on this rifle is a rust blue finish. It's a Mark Lee product that I use. It's a hot rust blue. It's basically the same as a cold rust blue, only we're speeding the process up, okay? So, but the methods used to prep this metal in order to blue it will be the same whether you're going to uh, spray finish it or whether you're going to uh, hot caustic blue it. It's good that the methods nested that what we're gonna go over in this class is, is the same, okay? So this is a very good method, very durable method. Um, I got uh, trying to turned on this method from um, uh, Butch Searcy. Now you guys can look him up. He's online. Um, Butch Searcy builds custom double rifles, dangerous game double rifles for some of the best known professional hunters in the world. Okay, Butch Searcy's rifles are anywhere from eighty thousand to one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. So think about that. When you're talking about finishes for your firearm, here's a custom builder that uses this exact same finish I'm going to teach you, and he's getting that kind of money for his firearm. So it is a very durable um, uh, uh, way to finish a firearm. And if, a, if that's the kind of money that you can get uh, for your custom firearm, that's what we should be aspiring to, right? We should be aspiring to providing that kind of finish for our customers when we're just doing them for a fraction of the cost, okay? So... Uh, this is the, this is uh, we're going to go over all in a minute. We're going to go over all the materials necessary. 
Um, and let's get to it. Okay, guys. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over briefly here uh, the things that are, you're, you're going to need, the materials you're going to need in order to strip your firearm. Okay. So what I like to do, and I've gotten really gotten the habit of this whenever I'm in the shop, regardless of whether I'm working with uh, the bluing materials, standing materials, or metal machining, is I like to wear these shop gloves. All right. Um, we're dealing with all kinds of chemicals and just flat out nasty stuff. Um, and on top of having to deal with COVID and everything else, your skin is an organ, okay? And when you work with all these chemicals and stuff, if you don't have gloves on, you're absorbing all of it. So um, pretty much anything I do, whether I'm chambering, whether I'm working on my mill, anything like that, um, I'm always wearing these, these uh, machine shop gloves like this. They're, they're, you buy a box, they're totally inexpensive. Um, get, the, get the good grade ones. Don't get the ones that are going to fall apart on you. Um, very worthwhile to have. So the first thing we're gonna need for stripping the finish off of your barrel, okay, is it's a step, it's a process. Um, you can sand the finish off your barrel, although when you do that, you're introducing uh, like arrow into it. You're stripping using sandpaper and you're putting all these little scratches into the barrel that you're gonna have to get out later, okay? So I like to use navel jelly, okay? Navel jelly, it's, um, this here is actually from the first year when I was in school, so I still have it and I have refinished or finished, uh, I don't know how many firearms now. So this stuff lasts for a long time, okay? You don't need a whole lot of it when you're doing it, but navel jelly is gonna remove that bluing off of it. And it's gonna remove it off in a way that doesn't do a lot of scratching or damaging to your metal, okay? Because you're trying to keep that to a minimum, all right? So navel jelly is something you're gonna need. Um, Home Depot, uh, uh, Lowe's, Ace, uh, True Value, they all carry this. All right, so very valuable. Pick up your navel jelly. You're going to need some kind of a container to put the navel jelly in, um, a brush in order to apply it onto your metal. Okay. Um, after you get it applied onto your metal, and you probably could be a rag here somewhere too, but you know, common sense, you're going to need a rag to wipe it off. But, um, one of the things after you get the, the navel jelly off and you get your finish off, one of the next steps, you're, the tools you're going to need is you're going to need a file, okay? Because when I get into the other video of actually sanding and, and filing uh, and prepping the metal, we'll get into more of this. But these are is a tool that you're going to need is a file, okay? Good metal working file, all right? Sanding blocks, okay? You're going to need a hard surface sanding block. And like I say, when, when I, the next video I do where I'm actually stripping some, uh, some metal off of a shotgun or finish off of a shotgun, I'll show you why, you know, sandy blocks are important. These right here I like to use. These are your foam sanding blocks, okay? Um, I like to use these because, you know, you can kind of get into the areas up, up against like a, like a receiver, something like up against the barrel or whatnot, you know, um, uh, Without with it, better, a little bit, a little bit tighter areas in the sanding block will get all right. And when you get to the point when you're when you're really trying to get down to the you know the the last part of the, the prepping of your metal, these sanding blocks are able to kind of take these straight lines out. When we're getting, I'm showing, I'm almost showing you guys the the uh, uh, the method the, that I use in order to uh, uh, strip the finish off. Um, using one of these straight out can leave little marks in the barrel that are that you really won't see until you finish it. These right here, these foam sandy blocks, kind of make your, your, your lines all consistent in one direction. So various grits, you know, there's, there's some sandy blocks that are like, you know, 60 grit, some that are, that are, you know, 100 grit, whatnot. Just basically you're going to get ones that are um, 150 and up, you know, try 150, uh, 220, 360, 400. Get those types of sandy blocks, okay? A really rough, coarse, 60-degree sandpaper, not really needed for this. You know, so just try and think about getting your blocks 150, uh, 220, 400, right around there, okay? And the last thing you guys are going to need is going to be sandpaper, various grits, okay? So I usually start off after I have stripped all the finish off, and, I'm, and if, I'm, if a, a firearm, there's different variations that you're going to need in order to uh, get something ready for, uh, for bluing. And we're going to get into all that, but one of the things you're going to need is 150, um, 220, uh, 320, and 400. Now, 400 and 320 are kind of uh, the, the tweeners, right? You can finish most of your stuff out at 320 and you'd be fine. 
Okay, 400 with the uh, with the Mark Lee method and the hot rust blue uh, that I use. 400 kind of gives it a nice, um, I call it a semi, uh, semi satin kind of a sheen to it. Very classic looking finish, okay? So the first one that I'm gonna do, the, the, the double barrel shock I'm gonna do, I'm gonna finish out at 400. So these are your basic tools that you'll need in order to prep your metal. Um, it's not very difficult. Um, all this stuff is available. So uh, the next video we're gonna do is we're gonna strip out um, a shotgun barrel, a double barrel shotgun, and uh, we'll go through that whole process of, 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 of getting your metal ready for, for bluing. All right, guys? All right, so like I said in the first lecture, pay attention to these videos. Um, every question that I ask you guys in midterms and finals is gonna come from these videos, all right? Okay.